Okay, so we were looking at um, aspirational competition. Let's look at vision statement and unique selling proposition. So vision statement, that sounds similar to last time, which was mission statement. A mission statement tells the world where you stand. A vision statement tells the world where you're going. Write a statement that makes predictions about what you want to accomplish as a company. You may set a time horizon, like in a certain amount of time, five years, 10 years, whatever, three months. Vic.co will be known for providing eye-catching web design for San Diego's most elegant restaurants. OK, so Vic.co, fictional company, makes websites. The short answer is they make websites. But their persona and their target audience and all of that, as I said earlier here, was uh, 30, someone in their 30s, trendy, have their own business, which I set up here. So a young, trendy, uh, hipster uh, restaurateur is the audience that we figured out for Vic.co. So therefore, the vision uh, that in some amount of time, there was no time period on this, but let's say five years. In five years, what this company will be known for is uh, making websites for restaurants, for trendy, modern restaurants. So therefore, uh, it sort of feeds back on itself that a, uh, all of the local uh, up-and-coming restaurants will want to hire Vic.co to do their web design because of the various examples of web design in that space. <coughs> so what you're eventually going for, what you're trying to accomplish in the longer term, is what the vision statement will be. And a lot of times people um, combine the two or confuse the two. There are technical differences. Um, but this is all, again, uh, the ancillary stuff of, of what SEO is. If you're going to optimize your website, you need to have all of these dimensions of it defined so that you can best do that. So vision statement in within some time period what does your company wish to accomplish? And this could be from all over the place, from matter of fact to prosaic in terms of uh, we want to sell 10,000 units a month. That's perfectly fine answer. That's a good answer. That's a goal. That's, that's the vision of the company. Whereas right now we're selling you know 900 units a month. We want to be up to 10,000 a month in X years. That's perfectly fine. Uh, once you know that, you have something to uh, strive towards so that then you can apply all of these other aspects of marketing, of creating personas, of, uh, of reaching that goal once you have a goal. It's okay if it is five years later and you're not quite there. Instead of 10,000 units, it's 7,000 units. I wouldn't call that a failure because what you had started with was 700 units. And you're up to 7,000 units a month. You didn't get to 10,000, but 7,000 is way better than 700. So something was working. There's still room for growth and improvement. So I will say, um, if you have a time horizon, it's OK that you don't reach it. It may have happened in six years or seven years, and you had set in five years. Our goal will be to be at a certain level. It's OK if you don't get it at that level. But it is a good motivator for a lot of people to have a sort of time limit. Although, you know, think about yourself. How many of you make uh, New Year's Eve, um, I mean, New Year's, uh, New Year's resolutions and don't follow through until the next year? So for some people, it's helpful, and for some, it's not to have a time period goal in the vision statement. So can be, how can we describe this? Uh, matter of fact versus can be a matter of fact goal or an artistic goal. Can't think of the opposite term for that at the moment. Matter of fact versus Visionary. That's too easy because it's in the title here. What's another synonym for that? Uh, serial? <laughs> sure. Prosaic. Just 
the opposite of matter of fact. Fact opposite of fact is fiction. What's the opposite of matter? Antimatter. Antimatter of fiction. Yeah, we got it. So um, just uh, it, it doesn't have to be as tangible, perhaps, because uh, the intangible one is sort of like this. Will be known for providing eye-catching web design for San Diego's most elegant restaurants. That could be reworded matter-of-factly to be will be hired by five companies per year to run their multi-million dollar restaurant websites. That's uh, uh, related to what I've got there putting it more tangibly, monetarily, whatever, it's the same thing. We want to be the go-to place uh, for, web, uh, for doing web design for San Diego restaurants. And the last, or any more questions on this one? Vision. This is another example where you can uh, go online and look it up. Examples of vision statements. Uh, some pop-ups here for churches, nonprofits, businesses, teachers, restaurants. That's curious. Vision statement for restaurants. Ten examples of restaurant mission and vision statements. Ten clever and inspiring restaurant mission statements. How to define your restaurant's value, vision, mission, and culture. So here's some examples. Root Down in Denver, Colorado. Root Down aims to connect the neighborhood to a dining experience in the same way ingredients are connected to food. Again, very ethereal right there. Uh, at Gracie's, our mission is simple. Enhance and educate the palate with the freshest... Not so simple if I'm reading this. Enhance and educate the palate with the freshest ingredients and flavors while surprising and exciting each guest with personal care and service. It's funny, our mission is simple, and then they go on that far. But again, it doesn't have to be like short or matter of fact. Here's a big one, founding farmers. For us, I notice right away their, notice right away their speech right there. These other ones, they named their company in a thir sort of third person, and here it is a first person. That's perfectly good also. That must be that they have this whole... Um, you know, this whole Bible of, of how their wording is on all of their material. For us, sustainability is not a lofty idea, but a fundamental and necessary endeavor. Our concept is about the food and drink, of course, but it's also about our team, our facilities, our practices, and the hundreds of decisions we make each day that affect the world around us. We believe it's about finding a balance which allows us to sustain our quest for making quality, accessible food, while also giving back to our community and their environment. So all of this could have been just this last sentence. We believe it's about finding a balance, etc. That would have worked fine. But they had a sort of preamble at the beginning about it's not just an idea, it's fundamental, it's necessary, etc. Yeah. Would this be something you would maybe put on your website? Yes. Like under the about page yeah, if you notice, many of these have the link back to their site. This one is going exactly to their about section. Uh, this one over here on their welcome section. So yeah, this is something to also put on your website and on your Twitter bio in your Facebook about a screen, either the whole thing or in snippets, because it's got these keywords that people might search for. Sustainable community environment, people might be searching for that. And if it's on your marketing material, your website, About Us page, the f Facebook About Us page, etc., it can help you get found. Yeah. Um, I have a, a book reference that uh, it nails this uh, mm -hmm. very well. Um, I don't know if you if have read uh, Good to Great by Jim Collins. No. Good to Great? Good to Great. And he comes down to the point of how do you get into the economic engine of your business to the point that you understand your hedgehog principle, hmm. which literally means what do you do better than anybody else in the world? 
Mm -hmm. And if you can't get to your hedgehog principle, do something else. Would you be able to see why, just curiosity, why is it called hedgehog principle? Sure. Because um, so it's, it's, it's blue and fast? Between, uh, real quick. Uh, it's a story between, it's an old story between the fox and the hedgehog. Uh -huh. And the fox is much more cunning, it's faster, it's able to move around and run around and do a thousand different things mm -hmm. much faster than the hedgehog. And the hedgehog is very lumbering and slow mm -hmm. and methodical, but the hedgehog does one thing better than the fox is able to do. It's able to curl itself up into a ball with all of its spikes out. For defense. For defense. And mm -hmm. so the fox never wins. Mm -hmm. So the hedgehog is able to do one thing better than any other animal that keeps it alive. Hmm. It's ba the basic uh, the premise. And in that book, he just breaks down to how do you get down to that. And in that book, it's over 20 years of research from his team. Hmm. And it's just a well, it's a fun read, and it really gets much Maybe. deeper into what we're talking yeah. about here in a very clear way. Let's see here, book recommendation, good to great. Good, good to Greta, good to great, mm -hmm. and um, I'll put the link there, and you can find it on Amazon and such. So it might be useful to also read in a theoretical way um, these concepts. I've got another book recommendation in a moment on the second section, but we're seeing here that uh, it's a whole big endeavor. Um, a lot of times, people think about SEO. Well, you know, writing keywords and putting them in our meta tags. And that was the way. But as I've said, websites are going to be 30 years old next year. These things change. The search engines in the beginning had to see 10 examples of that keyword on your site. Then they say, OK, your website is about this. So we'll rank you. As then these techniques are abused by spammers, the search engines have to change their techniques. So now it is like you're going to do a whole marketing course. Um, modern SEO it's uh, it's it's not just about putting keywords in your in your you know that your web address you've got to do so much of this to stand out against the competition to succeed so uh, I have a note here that I don't want to forget to say in a moment but uh, that one was uh, the vision statement you can find examples online and great articles about all of that and this last point here, the USP, the unique selling proposition. This is what we're talking here about the hedgehog. Uh, what do you provide your customers that no one else can? What makes you stand out from the rest? How do you uniquely solve their problems? And answer the question of why. So that's why would a client hire you? As opposed to the competition that is undercutting you by $100. So uh, Vic.co is based in San Diego. And many from our team graduated from Southwestern College, San Diego State University, UCSD. We therefore know the local culture. We can create compelling websites that cater to San Diego companies. So the point of that is a company can hire a web design company from all over the world. You can get very, very affordable web design done from international web designers. You can go to several uh, websites out there to hire, uh, you know, out of town, out of country, developers and they would give you a great price but those companies or those individuals might be kind of doing a cookie cutter web design a, a factory assembly line web design job and it may work and it may look nice and all of that but it doesn't have maybe a personal touch I'm a San Diego based business and I want a website and maybe I'm, I'm gonna hire a San Diego based designer because then they understand uh, the local culture. They know not to get on the five going south at three o'clock. Um, they know about, you know, the our frigid 70 degree winters and all of that. So uh, they uh, can relate perhaps to the business and the clientele much better than hiring someone else outside. Well, that's the unique selling proposition of this fictional company, Vic.co. And every company should try to figure out why do they stand out, how do they stand out, why would they be hired, what do they do well that the others don't. So that's the USP. Unique selling proposition. 
it is unique about you, your business, compared to the competition. Because as we've said, there's always competition. You're not the only restaurant. You're not the only Mexican food restaurant. You're not the only Mexican food restaurant in San Diego. You're not the only Mexican food restaurant in San Diego Main Street. There's a lot of competition. But what's unique about you? Your ingredients, your philosophy, your marketing, the, the food, the presentation of it, the, the servers. What's unique that'll make you stand out from your competition? Uh, this comes back to the why. And here's a book recommendation on that. Um, we've got Simon Sinek. He, uh, he's got a book called Start With Why. Also, um, I'm going to put a link to one of these videos. Okay, so. Start with why. And go look at a free video on that. So this is um, concepts about leaderships and inspiration and such, but also in business purposes, we can borrow it here. He's got this little chart, this drawing. Let me draw you a version of it over here and explain it. So I'll put this graphic in the, um, in the network folder a little bit later. But I'm going to draw some, some circles here, concentric circles. And um, actually, doesn't concentric mean it's got to be aligned in the center? Yeah. Okay, it's, these not are no, but I, but uh, that's okay. Uh, this is going to be the uh, olive example. Uh, so we've got um, on the outside, the outside ring. We've got the what. Then on the inner, we've got the how. And then in the center most, we've got the why. So how this relates to us in business. What does your business do? How does your business do it? And why does your business do it? So I'm a web design business. That's the what of it. My business, what do we do? We make web design. We do web design. We are a restaurant. We, what do we do? What do I do? I'm a lawyer. What do I do? I sell houses. I'm a realtor. This circle, notice how it's a lot bigger, so that means there's a lot of people, a lot of other people, a lot of competition also doing that. You're not unique. You're part of the big crowd of what? Everyone's a plumber. Everyone's a realtor. Everyone's a web designer. Okay, moving in further. How? How do we do our web design? Well, we focus on WordPress. Okay, that's getting you a little bit more uh, focused or niche because others might do it via WordPress and others might do it via Joomla and others might do it via Squarespace or whatever. So our how we do web design is getting a little more focused. We're standing out a little bit more from the competition. If I'm doing websites in, in a way like hand coding it, that might be a good or a bad about it, a positive or a negative, but it's different than the others. That might help me stand out. If I'm a restaurateur, the how do I prepare my dishes? Well, they're all 
uh, locally sourced. Everything comes from within 100 miles of the restaurant. It's all organic and locally owned compared to the place down the street that, uh, you know, doesn't do that. So the how our business does its thing here it could be more unique than the competition, so stand out. The why is the hardest one to figure out or to do because that's uh, perhaps you know the hardest one to, to define in terms of, okay, why do we do web design? Why do we make uh, websites for clients? Why do I have this restaurant? And the answer of to make money is a perfectly fine one to use. But we saw in the examples of those vision statements to bring our community together with the power of food or whatever they were. That why uh, isn't saying anything about selling more products and such. It's about this why of bringing community together about um, what else was there about uh, it's, a, it's an important endeavor in life and all of that. So the why of why your business does something that's the hard one to, to figure out but let's say okay web design Vic.co the why uh, why because we want to help uh, low to middle uh, income uh, people start up their own business with a beautiful website that will help them succeed so the short answer I want to sell web design services to people long answer I want to do it for a certain target audience etc so that is the why that is the one way to think about the unique selling proposition. Why would someone hire you compared to someone else that also does WordPress web design compared to someone else that also does web design? Because ours is the most unique because of X, Y, and Z. Could you use the mission statement in that? Um, yeah. Instead of trying to think up something separate? Or... Yeah. Yeah, the vision statement uh, could be this as well. Uh, vision statement, however, is like trying to do something toward a goal in the future. I mean, the mission statement. Oh, mission. Like, like if you have a mission statement that you have like on your website, on your about or something. Yeah, some of these things overlap. Okay. So I could easily see mission statements overlapping with this, definitely. I could see one informing the other, one being more detailed uh, for the other. Um, and yeah, all of this, a lot of this stuff can go into about us pages and such. So, why does your company do something better than the competition? Someone hire you versus the competition. From how to, uh, from what to how to why. Much of the preceding material, ideas, questions can be added to your site in about page or social profiles, bio sections, bio biography, biographical sections, um, because or for the purposes of Keywords being found. SEO. So all of this content, content that we're creating, this is what's going to inform your About Us page content or your homepage content or your, your footer on your site and such. Because when we talk about optimization, uh, we're going to be optimizing all of our pages and slightly differently each page and such. Uh, so the content that we create uh, is what helps us get found. So 
is a big uh, heady document, something to think about. Again, you don't have to fill this out and turn it in. You can fill it out, I can look at it, uh, you can have it for future use. That's fine, I'm not asking for royalties or anything like that. Take it and use it. I would say take a copy of it um, without any changes in case you want to reuse it in the future or in the future ask me for another copy of it. Uh, but the one in the network folder is without any changes. If you're going to work in this document, make a copy so that you have the original in case you need to change it in the future. Any questions on the ideas we talked about in this document or anything so far? All right, let me... Um, let me show you a link. And then we'll get back to the those analytics accounts, those uh, webmaster tools that we set up last week. We're going to get back to them in a moment. But let me show you one thing before that. If you want to go to your web browser, we're going to find a link, and then I'll put it in the in the notes. Let's go to the web. Let's go to this. Let's go to this site right here. Brandgfx.com. Brandgraphics.com. GFX. So this is a marketing company. It is a colleague of my company. Uh, they focus on marketing, graphic design, and such. They've got a blog. Let's go look at the blog on the on the right side over here. And we'll search for the keyword comprehensive. So in the blog screen, go ahead and search for comprehensive. Should be this top result here. The comprehensive list of ways to market your business. I'm going to put the link in the network folder, and then we'll look at this uh, blog for a moment. Useful blog post. These are a variety of ideas to further research about marketing. As we've talked about marketing, synonymous with advertising, synonymous with getting the word out for your business. So these are ideas to get the word out about your business. In no order and not required that you do them all, because to do them all would require an army of marketing people working for you to do all of this. Picking and choosing two or three or five uh, would be very helpful. So simply word of mouth or asking for referrals. You might provide some sort of service, you know, goods or services uh, to customers, and you never think about asking for uh, referrals or asking to be referred to people. Um, that is that is something legitimate as well as a form of marketing to turn your happy customers into free advertisers for you. Doing network networking events such as going to groups uh, there's various membership organizations in various businesses and niches you could go to. You can go to civic organizations, volunteers, clubs and such. So if I'm a restaurateur, I might want to find out what sort of rest local restaurant organizations exist in my city or county and maybe go to them. And I will meet other like-minded businesses. Maybe there I can get me reach contacts and find how did you do your your uh, your car wraparounds how much did it cost where did did you like the quality and then I meet people fellow restaurateurs that I get advice from or make contacts for sales and such 
uh, if you're not on Yelp or Angie's List or Kudzu or these other sorts of testimonial or review sites, you should look into, into that. You actually oftentimes might already be on Yelp and you don't know it. And then someone's uh, writing negative things about your business and you don't even know it. Well, for Yelp, uh, you can go in and claim your business and then handle it. You can reply to people's disgruntled comments. You can try to fix things, fix your reputation. Uh, people don't think about that. It, it's not exactly a social network, but it is in terms of there's content, there's um, replies, people can favorite a um, or, or like a, a review and such, and all of these testimonials, they, they help you uh, with SEO placement and such. Social networking, so getting on Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. Get on those networks. So jumping around, what else do we have here? PPC, so thinking about paying on Facebook or LinkedIn or Google for results. Um, I, in this class, like I said, I, I'm not going to focus on that. <coughs> and it's not bad or it's not cheating to do this because it's part of your marketing. It's, it's a way if you set aside some budget a month, you know, $20, $100, $1,000 a month to pay to get results on search engines, that's fine. And you can start it off for, the, for one month, two months, three months, whatever. And then once you've got the ball rolling that way, and then you also engage in these other things, it, it can snowball. It can keep you going even if you've stopped paying for that. The problem is that people think, well, I'm going to pay, I'm going to get at the top, then I'm going to stop paying, and I'm going to stop everything else. Well, then that's how then your money then stops working for you because then you drop out of top results because you're not active anymore. You, you had that burst of activity or when you paid to get results and then you stopped. No, you, you can start it, you can stop it, but then keep going with other avenues. Uh, editorials, webinars, podcasts. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't write this one actually, so this would be uh, one of the ones where I would look that up. It seems to be advertiser editorials. Yeah. Advertisement editorials, like, like a stealth commercial advertisement, but it's also an editorial. Do you have a definition for that? Yeah. Maybe? Well, not. I mean, it's like if it's online, it's where you know it's embedded. Like, say in Yahoo, they'll have news stuff. And then you'll see one, and it'll say amazing this and that, and in a little tiny letters you'll see sponsored. So that's a, it looks like an article, you know, that's part of the news, but it's not. It's a, they're, they're paying for that advertising. It's a paid editorial. It's a paid editorial, and in, in print, kind of the same way they mix it in. Okay. Yeah, I see that like uh, when I uh, when I would read a parade magazine. Uh, there'd be the regular articles, and it'd be an article, then it'd be listed at the top, paid, paid article or whatever, paid sponsorship. So this this is a, a very good article to give you the ideas of these things, but it would be perfect if there were like definitions on some of them. Well, guess what? On most of these things, you can select the word. On most browsers nowadays, here's a super advanced tip here. On most web browsers, you can select a word and then right click it, and most browsers nowadays then have a built-in search out of some sort of text on the screen. So if you don't want to type up on your search bar, advertorials, on most browsers you can select it and there's going to be search built in. Just to kind of get a definition. A newspaper or magazine advertisement giving information about a product in the style of an editorial or objective journalistic article. So it's an advertisement. It is a paid article on a topic. It could look like a regular article. Now we might have the you know preconception of it that well this is just fake it's paid they're gonna say the best thing they took the money and and ran with it and they made a great article about it um, again everything that you're trying to do online and based on your own you could say morals is in bounds for you is legitimate for you to do for your business to succeed uh, if I'm going to pay, you know, five dollars and buy a thousand email addresses to spam people, 
if it's within your moral boundary to do it and it makes your business succeed, then I'm not going to stop you. I'm going to delete your spam message that I got, but any of these things that you do uh, that helps your business is legitimate within your moral compass. Yeah. I didn't see in this list uh, affiliate networks. Um, what That's not exactly how, yeah, how you're yeah, saying yeah. it, but related to that, yes. Affiliated networking. They might have it listed in a slightly different term, but um, yeah, is it affiliated. Here in the United States? It is. Um, I think a little more common might be multi level marketing firms, which are similar to that, but uh, like Mary Kay and uh, Amway, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, I've known people that work on those businesses, and when they run them well, they do very well. But it's hard yeah. to get into them and then to do well in them. Yeah. So we've got. I have a, good experience about that. Oh, really? Yeah, it's not too possible to convert, you know, in sales. It's yes. Hard. Because yeah, I I had a landing page, uh -huh. but normal people click but don't buy. It. Yes, exactly. That's that's yeah. everything. That always happens. Yes, um, you know, it's so easy to click like or reply or whatever on social media, but then it's hard to click buy. Yeah. It it is hard. It is. That's why doing more of these things is possible. You might have had that landing page, but on the landing page, did you have some sort of infographic to convince people? People that buy or do this thing succeed this way. So you're still always marketing to people at every turn at every turn to try to get them to buy. So, just a lot of ideas to look at here. Online surveys, infographics, direct mail. You know, people still get mail in the mailbox. Is there a way for you to, to use that and send out mail? Obviously, well-designed and with a good message and memorable. There's video. Uh, what kind of videos can you create that... Um, promote yourself commercials or funny memes and jokes and things or advertising so uh, I'll put that in the notes and um, it's a lot to look at and uh, even it's it says here the almost comprehensive always expanding never complete list of ways to market your business because new things are going to come out. It doesn't mention anything here about holograms and then eventually we'll have that. It doesn't mention about location-based <coughs> advertising. So you know we've got uh, these phones that have GPS uh, in the future. You're going to be walking down the street and your phone is going to then connect with a billboard and the billboard will change to advertise what you would care about instead of something that's there that everyone would see. So a lot of ideas here. 